Hey everybody, and Tony here with yet another tribute video to another Nicktoon founding father, and that is Ren and Stimpy. Now, this Nicktoon was pretty much a founding father to a lot of the gross-out comedies that you usually see in a lot of cartoons as well. And sometimes these type of shows have also drew their influences upon Ren and Stimpy when it came to how much they can get away with from from a lot of basic TV viewings, especially with one controversial episode called Man's Best Friend, in which there was one scene in which Ren was literally beating the crap out of his owner, George Licker, American. And, well, it was pretty much the banned episode because, well, it was extremely violent to view, especially for young kids as well especially for people who really liked Ren and Stimpy. And, well, but it was also safe to say that Ren and Stimpy was also not just the founding father for Nicktoons, but was also the founding father for a lot of other cartoons that adopted this style of comedy. It was not just the buddy comedy that we get from Ren and Stimpy, but we also get the irreverent comedies as well. You also get your gross-out humor, and even to a lot of the off-color humor, which may put off like a good an amount of people, but my type of humor is also pretty subjective. So even though Ren's and Stimpy's type of dominant humor is usually that of gross-out humor, it's like I didn't really mind, just as long as there was strong writing and, well likable characters, and even naturally funny moments, and just as long as there was always some tact. And with Ren and Stimpy, I do feel like there was some tact. Oh sure, there were some episodes that kind of made me feel kind of sick, but despite that, I always seem to know that there was some tact used when it came to certain episodes, and there was always something that could always make me come back to the show, mostly because it's extremely quotable and it's extremely, like, fun. And there was never a dull moment for me, especially when it came to the commercial spoofs. Like, for example, you have the likes of Log, which is a children's toy, and it even has a certain feature in which it's well, dressable as well, which I thought was a very surreal type of commercial, but it's one that I still ha have a lot of fun with. And not to mention stuff like Cheese Fist and um, Chicken in a Drawer and m many other things as well, especially Powdered Toast and Sugar Frosted Milk Lumps. And I'm like, wow, this really goes out of its way to really like to really, really see how, how many, how much boundaries, or how many boundaries this can really, like, go over. And this broke boundaries. And this was also founding father for a lot of cartoons that had this style of humor. And even though it was inserted here and there, you could really tell that the influence of Ren and Stimpy was really strong. Without Ren and Stimpy, we wouldn't have cartoons like Rocco's Modern Life, Ah Real Monsters, Angry Beavers, Cow and Chicken, Adventure Time, Regular Show, uh, Timon and Pumbaa, Beavis and Butthead, and even the likes of Family Guy as well. You could tell that Beavis and Butthead did take its inspiration from Ren and Stimpy mostly because yeah, Beavis and Butthead also did make some uses of gross out humor as well. And there were also some imitators as well, but none of them could really match up to how Ren and Stimpy was as a cartoon. It was really innovative and it was really groundbreaking. And yes, it was a very um, divisive show. There were people that really loved the show. There were people that were kind of in the middle of the show. And there were kind of people that really hated this show mostly because it was extremely, extremely gross and just almost too surreal for them. Or it just people 
who just couldn't get into the show. But despite that, you can't really deny the legacy that Ren and Stimpy really left to a lot of future cartoons at the time. And it still leaves a strong legacy to this very day. Especially when you had the likes of John Crispel Lucy on the helm. Of course, he was definitely difficult to work with. He was fired from Nickelodeon after two to three seasons of producing the show, which then left writers like Bob Camp, and especially with Games Animation, to take full helm of the show, because once upon a time, seasons one until two were taken helm by Spoonco until seasons three to five ended up being transferred to Games Animation. So you could really see just how much difficult, how many difficulties this show ended up having, especially when it came to the writers, especially when it came to the direction it was going for as well. But despite that, it still offered some memorable episodes that I've definitely enjoyed. Take a good look at the two-part top 25 favorite episodes of Ren and Stimpy as proof. And sure, there were duds. Like, I will admit, Aloha Hoek was pretty much what the fans didn't really care for, mostly because of the twist ending, and especially that Ren ended up being so mean in this episode and ended up being such an asshole in there. But despite that, I kind of like this episode mostly because of Dom DeLuise's portrayal as Big Kahuna. Usually when you think Dom DeLuise, you'd usually expect him to play all of these larger-than-life characters who are very exuberant and very lively and jovial. But with hearing him as Big Kahuna, I could really see that he's he's basically made a great use of versatility in his voice, thus voicing a an overweight version of Marlon Brando, aka and who's like a, who's a native Hawaiian in this show. So overall, despite like saying that Aloha Hoek was pretty much a weak episode, I still liked it, and it was still number twenty five of my most favorites episodes of all time from Ren and Stimpy. And yes, this definitely shows that despite the hardships that the people went through with this show, and especially with the direction change from John Chris Lucy, especially after he ended up quitting Nickelodeon, especially when he made like other shows outside Ren and Stimpy, it really does show that Ren and Stimpy really had a strong... Um, a strong foundation to a lot of the other cartoons from the 90s all the way up to the early 2000s. Hell, even the likes of Cat Dog was, um, was influenced by this show because it followed the basic formula of having a duo in which one is intelligent and, well, he's smart, smarter than anybody else. But then you have his partner who's usually usually dim-witted and very much simple-minded as well. And the same can be said about Cartoon Network's version of um, Ren and Stimpy, which is in the form of Cow and Chicken. But unlike the duo which are portrayed as friends, these duo, this duo is basically portrayed as siblings for almost no reason what's, whatsoever. It manages to be twice as weird as Ren and Stimpy. But, well, to a lot of people, it's sort of a hit-and-miss show, but with Ren and Stimpy, at least it always had some tact. Of course, there were other imitators like the Schnuckums and Meat show, in which, in this case, there was a a sharp-witted cat and a dim-witted dog. So, nothing memorable to say about the Schnuckums and Meat show, but, well, because I didn't really watch it. I've mostly been watching Ren and Stimpy, and I was mostly a Cartoon Network kid, and even, like, transitioning to Nickelodeon as well. So, every time I look back at Ren and Stimpy, there was always a certain charm with this show that I always kept coming back to. Every time I've, I've seen certain episodes, they've either made me laugh my butt off or even made me kind of, kind of scared and kind of made me have almost, almost, almost a certain tingle in my spine every time I see these messed up moments. And despite that, there was there were always times in which I felt that the show had charm and a certain likability to it that may not always please a lot of people, but it always manages to really say it doesn't matter. It's it's pretty much 
my show and it's pretty much what I want to do and that's pretty much it. So it really is something to say that Ren and Stimpy really did inspire a lot of other other comedic cartoons to be from this mold. It, some of them for the best, some of them for the okay, some of them for the worst. But despite that, Ren and Stimpy really did play a strong role in the field of comedic cartoons. And, well, I guess that's why a lot of us sick little monkeys will keep going back to the show even to this very day. And it's no wonder why it made such strong influences on the likes of other Nicktoons at the time, especially the really good ones like Invader Zim, Angry Beavers, and Cat Scratch. And even the likes, and of course, it also, like, influence other good ones, especially from Cartoon Network as well, like Regular Show and Adventure Time and The Amazing World of Gumball and at times Steven Universe. So Ren and Stimpy really did leave a strong, oh, and even influence the likes of Freakazoid as well, mostly because it's also a surreal and it also left an influence on the likes of Brandy and Mr. Whiskers, also because of how surreal the show can be. So... I'd have to say that Ren and Stimpy is pretty much respected for its use of surreal imagery and a combination of all types of humor rolled up into one weird yet wonderful package. So I really, really thank Ren and Stimpy for pretty much being a staple of being, of being animated, animated comedy gold in its own very special weird way. I may not revere it t compared to the likes of the Looney Tunes and Tom and Jerry, but I could, I could really see its influences coming from those two shows, and I could really see that shine really well in Ren and Stimpy despite the dark days that it went through. And even if it did have a spin-off of this really god-awful looking piece of crap known as Ren and Stimpy adult party cartoon, and I'll take care of that review. I'll take care of that, and we'll review that. Yeah. So that's pretty much it for my tribute to Ren and Stimpy, and as I said before, stay tuned later for my review of the very lame spinoff show from Ren and Stimpy's ass. Ren and Stimpy adult party cartoon, and yes, I'm fully aware that Rowdy C also made a review of this, and of course, Mr. Enter also did an episode review of this show. But I'm also willing to add my own spin to my review as well, and give my own thoughts to what I think about this show. Of course, I'm not entirely enthusiastic about this, given the fact that it has a very bad rap. But I'm willing to give my own voice to the show, so until then, see you later everybody, and God bless my soul when it comes to this spinoff show.